Hi everyone, this is round two um, about the drums. Now you'll have to excuse me, I'm a bit cold here in the minute due to the weather, needless to say. Um, now, what we're going to do today is we're going to start looking at drums when they've lost their sound because of the weather. Loads of reasons for this, it can be going from really hot to really cold, it can be going to they got damp and they weren't stored properly so the skin stretched. Um, and even if the drum has been stored properly, it can still stretch a little bit. So, we're going to start looking at different ways of dealing with that today and it's going to culminate in uh, me taking apart a drum and then putting it back together again. Alright? So, a drum should sound something similar to this. that sounds then nice um, and then should have that kind of like nice tone to it right now this is one here this is the 16 inch one here that got um, overly cold and we got a little bit damp where it was um, and I didn't catch on to it in time so it's a prime example of when you might go out and use your drum you think you've put it away properly and you haven't happens to the best of us right you can see skin is just soft and saggy right whereas unlike this one it's not it's still got its tallness there okay so in the first instance if your drum is like that try warming it up okay now I appreciate some guys only have central heating so if you've got central heating take the, the, the stove here as your radiator hang it up just above it where the mine calendar is there okay all right, but put a glass of water on top of the radiator, okay? Because uh, you need to keep just a little bit of moisture in the air, yeah? Uh, now, we burn wood, sustainable wood, I hasten to add. So um, there is a slight moisture content in it, which is kind of handy, right? So now if I hit this drum, as I'm sure you'll agree, doesn't sound the best, right? Now, so, First thing we do, just to see how we can get on with it, is have a good fire going. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the uh, camera on, so you can see I'm, I haven't swapped the drum out. And then what we do is, so I'm talking about good heat, all right? Now, literally. Warm the drum thoroughly, right? Don't be frightened. Okay, but just keep it away and checking it. Because the last thing you need to do is obviously uh, it's combust, but don't be scared, that's the thing. See, you can hear it's already just starting to change a little bit there. So basically what we're doing is, is we're forcing any damp or moisture out of the drum um, that might have collected or might be held in there. So it doesn't take long. Can you hear how already starting to change? Starting to get that tone in there. Right. And what you can sometimes hear, I don't know if you're going to pick it up on this, is if you're outside and you're doing this on um, an open campfire like, when you hold the drum over the campfire, again don't be frightened, right? And what you might hear is a faint kind of <laughs> sound, this little <laughs> right? And once that sound has happened, take the drum away from the fire. Um, because that's basically all the moisture gone. Okay. All right. Now. See. 
Now there's a little bit of a rat in this drum, so this is the one I'm going to take apart uh, and show you. See how much that's changed? Right, just by a couple of minutes. And just to show you, wasn't cheating, here's another one. See? Okay. These are different skins by the way, one's bison, one's red deer. So with the red deer, be a little bit more careful. Being thinner skin. So it's needless to say it's gonna dry out a lot quicker than say like the bison would do. Okay. Sorry about the little bleed there, that was my uh, my phone, you know, I'm kind of in, trying to embrace this technology thing. Another thing, while this is there, uh, while this is doing its thing, another thing I'd say to you is as well, if you've got tile floors like we have here, don't store your drum on the tile floors, okay? Keep them off the ground, all right? Because need to say, there's a real coldness to the tiles, I'm not trying to point out the obvious. Uh, but the thing is, with, with us having fires burning a lot this time of year, and then going to bed and the fire's going out, you know, there's these massive temperature changes constantly. So you might find yourself having to do this. Um, right. Right. See how that's changed? Yeah, from that dull thuddy sound that we had a minute ago. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off, um, this is kind of like part one really. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the video camera, give it 20 minutes, and I'm going to put one of these drums directly on the cold stone floor, okay? So you'll see how quickly it can deteriorate, all right? Okay, speak to you in a sec. Right, so um, I thought with uh, cooling down the drum, I would um, come to a diff different sort of level with it. So what I've done is I've brought it outside and as you can see the table so see the water splashing around. You see the water splashing around. So what I'm doing is I'm deliberately soaking this drum as if we've been out all night at a ceremony or something like that and it's been raining heavily. Alright? And then, we're even going to go one step further, and uh, there's a bucket of water here. So, okay. Right, now. Yeah, you can feel that's already starting to go and you can see it. Alright, so. I'm just going to turn this off and then I'll show you around. As if we've got back from the ceremony and we're now caring for our drum. Right, so here we are. As you saw, I uh, put it in that pool of water on the table and then um, stuck it in a bucket of water as well. Now hopefully you can see that is absolutely drenched, that drum. Yeah, okay. Now it's going to happen. Right, now, so same applies, but do it a little bit more gently to begin with. All right? Because we're taking, there's an awful lot of moisture in there now. You know, it's even stripping out. If you can see, uh, see the floor, there's little pools of water here. So, just be a little bit more steady with it to begin with. So, so just start drying it out. And as again, see, you can see the steam coming off it. Can you see the steam coming off it? Yeah, hopefully you can see that. There we go. 
go. Also lots of steam. Okay. Yeah, loads of steam rising. So just keep turning it. Still feels damp, you're starting to get that sound back. Just while I'm doing this, um, and that's right, yeah, that's one thing I should point out is all the lacing. So, so like this is um, a 32 hole lacing, right? A lot, of the, a lot of the drums do a 16, but you want to try and get all the damp out, yeah? So, that's all the way around the drum, backside, sides. Front, yeah, yeah, about 10 minutes of your time. And for the sake of keeping the sound in your drum, time well invested. Now, sometimes. What I do as well, I have a conveni conveniently placed basket down here, not a million miles from the fire. So that's our paper basket. Um, so what I can do is, is I can prop the drum upright and I can move it towards the far away from us as I need to, okay? But just checking it, all right? So therefore I don't have to sit holding it all the time, yeah? And like I was saying to everyone, when it comes to your drum, always store them up like that on the rim, or hang them up, but not on the floor, okay? Now, we're gonna, for the sake of um, showing you how to do this properly, we're gonna pretend that this drum I couldn't get the sound back on it, okay? Right, so, whenever you get one of my drums, I don't use nails, I don't use glue. I just, when the skin comes right over the rim, I do use little pins in there, just to hold the skin down, stop it flowering, but they can be removed once the drum's dry. Um, so, for those of you who've come here and made them, you'll know all about that. And uh, So, what you're gonna need is one of these. It's an awl, okay, AWL. Now they are sharp, so you have to be a bit mindful of your fingers, right? But whenever we make drums here, we always leave a little bit of a loose end, just a little bit, you know, about a centimetre maximum really, um, beyond the knots, okay? Now, as raw hide dries, it shrinks. So you normally have quite long loose ends to begin with, but then you can trim them down, okay? But anyway, so you just need one of these lads. And what you do is you find your knot, Right, and once you've found your knot, what you're trying to do is just open that knot up, okay? So see? And what you'll find is if, if you've ordered a drum off me, and I've, I've sent it to you, there'll normally be two or three knots at the end of each piece of lacing, okay? All right? And when you first do this, it can be very frustrating because people don't realize quite how tough this stuff is, right? And then what you do is you unwrap 
the rawhide. Okay. There is no harm in doing this, right? Because there'll be more um, of these videos coming up, right? Time and time again. And we'll, the next one will be showing you how to put it back together again, all right? So, and then, so when you look at the laces, right? There's four handles, yes? There's a knot at the end of each, okay? Now, for some of you, who have had more complicated lacing done on the back of your drums, there might be more knots. But when you come to the end, you'll find them, okay? Now, if you need to, because you're taking the drum apart, um, you can actually, just to help loosen it up, if you get one of those squirty water bottles, you know, like you'd use for ironing or something, um, you can just damply, damp lightly sorry lightly dampen the leather down a little bit and it just makes taking it apart that little bit easier okay what i would say to you is don't do what i did out there and drop it in a bucket of water all right um because that can lead to a few more problems but gentle spraying and gently taking it apart is grand i was being a bit dramatic with the bucket of water out there but there we are um so you just keep working away at it So that's two done. And if you're doing this, and for some reason, it's very rare that it happens, but if something breaks, just get in touch with us and I can send you out another bit of rawhide, okay? Now, if you've made your own drum here, you'll know how to cut it. But if you haven't made a drum here, and it's a fact that you're trying to fix your drum, you know, just let us know and we'll send some out to you. It's not a bother, okay? And any problems, you know it's Wild Irish Drums on, on Facebook, um, or Fwinchadove, um, dot com but also a lot of you know me personally um, so you can get me by messenger or the telephone numbers up there and all that as well it's, it's not a worry you know i like to think that uh, my drums are for life you know and hopefully that's the people who have them that's their intention as well you know um, so we work it out and we just unwind See, that's those bits of lace and undone. All right. Now, where we come in next is we find the first knot of the drum, and you know this, right? Because all these bits will be in pairs, but the first one will be a single strand. Yeah. See, so those two go together. This is a single. So just follow that. You'll find the knot. Okay. Now this is the trickiest one in my because it's had, when you've been tightening the drum up, it's had all the pressure on it. Now, now, that's another thing as well. If you're doing this yourself for the first time and you have problems, again, just get in touch, all right? And there's, I prefer people to try than not try at all, you know? And uh, if you've tried, brilliant, you know. But if you're really worried about it, or if you feel you've made a mistake, or just don't feel like you can do it, what I would say to you is, is give it a go. And if it goes wrong, for whatever reason, or you suddenly lose your, your confidence, or 
whatever about doing it. That's not a worry. Don't worry about it. Just let us know, okay? We can sort something out. We can always sort something out, okay? Now, as you can see, that was much more tricky than the other ones, right? So, and then what you do is you'll have four knots as well where the, the bits of lacing made the handle were tied on, okay? Now, what we do is, is whenever we make one of my drums, we try we hide the knots underneath, okay? So, once you've loosened just that one off, it seems to make everything just be out to spin around. So, it's kind of like um, you have to go forward a bit to come back and, and get it right. And then what we're doing is, is we're wanting to take the knots out there, okay? All right, so that's a really tricky one. Had to be, didn't it? Right, what am I here? So, If for whatever reason, like I was saying, you've done such a top job where you accidentally cut it or break it, just get in touch, all right? It's not. It's not a big deal. That's what me for all the end of the day. All right, so, there we go. And all we're trying to do is just get to that point where we can take this apart in the easiest way possible. And it can be a little bit tricky. Um, and rather than me turn off the video camera and go, duh, 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 look at me, aren't I great? Um, I prefer to actually show you the whole process because it can be a little bit can be a little bit tricky. Right. So okay. See, that's one bit of lacing we went all the way around here to do up the handles, you see? So you're using quite a lot of lacing. And that's also why it's really important to get the tool for the job, which is this. Don't get one of the tiny awls, all right? Because they do come in various different shapes and sizes. Um, this one's about six, eight inches long. And you may well injure yourself a little bit, like I've done that, but that's all right. It's all part of the fun. Okay. Yeah. 
And if it is your first time, which I presume it will be for a lot of people who are watching this, when you're dealing with it, follow your intuition a little bit. There we go. You know, if it doesn't feel right, just stop. Yeah, and sometimes give it a little bit of a pull about and you'll find out what you're trying to get to, right? Okay. Because when we come to my, uh, doing the videos on making them, on making the drums, you'll see a little technique we use when we've laced it to centralise this middle knot, you know? And, um, For some, this will be the trickiest one for you to find, as I'm demonstrating really well here. See? There we go, now we're off. Now, with the rawhide, when it dries, after you've laced it, it'll be, it'll be wet when you lace it. It kind of binds itself together a little bit, yeah, when it shrinks, okay? So don't be frightened if you have to pull and push a bit. All right, you're not gonna do any, not gonna do any damage. Well, I say that, but if you do do any damage, don't worry about it, it can be fixed. So I, uh, I don't think I said actually, but this um, made a bit of a lot of firing back here because this one is a small drum, uh, but it's bison. And for me, bison is the toughest skin, all right? Um, to do anything with, um, really. But for me, it's, it's the one that resonates for me, so. There. Do you see how it's all coming apart? And all we want to try and do is keep everything as intact as we can without cutting it. One thing that always amazes people when they come here to make a drum is the amount of actual rawhide that we use in making a drum, you know? It's a um, lot. Um, probably, hopefully, well see from that, you know? Um, a lot of people think it's a lot more simple than it actually is. Because um, we do uh, everything by hand here. So, because I know there's some people 
out there. I've heard stories and all those things. I'm not trying to cast any rumours. Um, you know, they'll just snip the lot out and then replace it. But what we try and do here is, unless something needs replaced, we like to try and keep the drum original um, because that's what the intent was when it was first made. Is all in that, isn't it? You know, and. Um, it's nice to try and keep the drum as original as possible, I feel. So, I appreciate that's my personal preference, but there we are. You know, I'm not criticising anyone who does it any other way. Right, so. And if the weather was a little bit better, we'd be doing most of this outside anyway. But um, as I'm sure everyone in Ireland can agree, the weather's not the greatest at the moment. All right, so there we go. That's all the lacing taken off. Now we need to take this bit off, okay, as well. Because we need that to soak as well. And when you're soaking it, just use um, spring water, okay? Um, because water with chlorine and fluoride and all that other wonderful stuff in it. It's, it's just not right, if I'm being honest, you know. You'll notice, if I was to have, put two bits of skin, one in fluoride water and one in um, spring water out there, you'd know the difference. Um, it's very, you know, the smells a lot of it, really. Now you can see how tight that skin's on there, all right? And you've got to really work the skin well the skin out of it, okay? Now, this is a 16 inch drum. Can you imagine the bigger the drum, the more skin, the heavier the skin, how difficult that is. So anyway, so look, this is the complete dismantled drum. Right, easy as that, okay? So what I'm gonna go and do now is, is I'm gonna go and put this skin um, out in spring water, um, out the back there. In actual fact, it's where I gave it the, uh, the little bathe a minute ago. Um, and then in the next day or so, depending on how well the skin dampens down, I will be then putting the drum together, okay? So, like I say, if this is something you feel you need to do to your drum, don't worry about it, give it a go. And if it doesn't work out, you can always get in contact with me, all right? Um, and uh, we, can, we can go through it. All right, guys, thanks ever so much for, for watching. Hopefully you didn't find that too boring or anything like that. Um, but when we do these videos, we're going to do the videos in the entirety. We're not going to suddenly, well, as much as we can, we're not going to suddenly stop and then come back 20 minutes later and go, oh, look at me. Uh, we'll actually show you through the whole, whole process from start to finish. All right, guys, thanks very much, all right? Take it easy.